Alright, hi guys, Dane here and Biggie of course as well and uh, here today we're going to follow up with my My Cat Picks My TBR video so I'm going to show you a few clips from that now so you can see what books uh, Biggie picked and then I'm going to go through and we're going to see what I made of them so here we go Is that it? You went for it? He went for... Alright Thank you Biggie You can eat those two as well if you want uh, He picked Kirk Sandblaster and Zlar's World War Oh, oh, was that a selection? That was. You picked Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. Thank you, cat. All right, okay, next two books. Stop looking around like a derpy derp. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you've gone for The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. Did you, you see the thing is, he's silent as well, aren't you? You just had the what? So he's picked Need You Dead by Peter James, and I didn't even hear him chew it. I don't think he did. I don't think he bothered. <laughs> okay, so the first book that I picked up was Kirk Sandblaster and Zlar's World War by Ollie Jacobs. And this one was a good one, Biggie. Uh, this one was, I think, book number five or number six now in a series. It's kind of almost Douglas Adams-y, humorous comedy sci-fi. Uh, Ollie Jacobs is a high Wickham author, so he's local to me. And actually, this has been out for a while on ebook, but it's only recently come out in paperback, and I couldn't wait to pick it up. And this involves them going back to uh, Zlar's homeworld. Let me read you the blurb here. War! That's the situation on the planet Zarya. Overwhelmed by overpowered rebels, the hopes of the planet rest in one space-adventuring duo, Kirk, Zamblaster, and Zlar. This time, though, is personal. Zarya is Zlar's planet, and it's his family who give the call. Last time he was there, he left in disgrace, so has conflict changed his ways in the eyes of his father, King Zur, or is he still seen as the reckless warrior he once was? What was that? <laughs> Join another thrilling Kirk Sandblaster adventure filled with twists, turns, and even more sandwiches than ever before. Find out who is behind the rebellion, the power of super power suits, and what a Zarian bond is. Amazon readers have called the Kirk Sandblaster series absolutely fantastic read, utterly hilarious, and humorous and smart. Complete the collection today by adding Kirk Sandblaster and Zlar's World War to your sci-fi comedy collection. And interestingly, Zlar is one of my favourite characters from the series because he's such a pessimist really. So you've got Sandblaster himself is kind of this stereotypical flashy space adventurer type. He sort of shoots first, asks questions later, and then Zlar just is like a two-headed, four-fisted dude who will just bludgeon people into unconsciousness. He's a, like a ruthless killer, really. And it's interesting to see him going back to his home planet because there have been a lot of references so far to like, the relationship he has with his family. He's basically a bit of an outcast, which is how he ended up with Kirk Sandblaster in the first place. And so it was cool to see them to go back to Zlar's home planet. and to I mean, it's called Zlar's World War. It's more like a more like a civil war, it's like a s civil war in space kind of thing and uh, we have some other characters that have been elsewhere in the series come into play in this you don't necessarily have to have read all of the books in order to appreciate them and in fact I've kind of just read them as and when I got hold of them uh, so I think, I think it helps if you read all the books in order but it doesn't matter too much and actually I will also say that throughout the series Jacobs has got better and better as an author and even things like the layout and uh, you know the cover design and the actual look and feel of these books have got better okay well Biggie left for a while while I was filming and now he's back again and uh, also my battery died but yeah I was pretty much at the end of what I was gonna say about this I am gonna be reviewing this for Todd and Dane's indie read-along so check that out as well I don't think you necessarily need to read these books in order and they are a lot of fun so I would recommend them and I gave this a solid four out of five so good choice Biggie thank you thank you my man yeah you did good didn't you no bitees no bitees just just sniff Okay, so the second book that Biggie picked was Need You Dead by Peter James, and this is one of his Roy Grace novels. I'm going to read you the blurb here. Some killers are closer than you think. Lorna Belling, desperate to escape the marriage from hell, falls for the charms of a man who promises her the earth. But as Lorna soon finds, life seldom follows the plans you've made. A chance photograph on a client's mobile phone changes everything for her. When the body of a woman is found in a bath in Brighton, Detective Superintendent Roy Grace is called to the scene. At first it looks an open and shut case with a clear prime suspect. Then other scenarios begin to present themselves, each of them tantalisingly plausible, until, in a sudden turn of events, the case becomes more twisted and dangerous than Grace could have ever imagined. So, 
I've been reading kind of the Roy Grace novels on and off. They are great, pretty, pretty, you know, British crime novels. They're set in Brighton, and each of the novels works as a standalone. But also, there's like an overarching story following, say, you know, uh, Grace's love life, for example, his first wife Sandy, and then what happens with her, and then he eventually remarries. And in this one, he's uh, adopting. Well, he's sort of adopting his kid that he didn't know he had. Uh, this little German kid uh, called Bruno, I believe. Um, so yeah, so you can kind of read them out of order, but it also obviously works better if you do read them in order. I did enjoy this one. I thought it was quite good as well because it had a lot of stuff in terms of um, police corruption. And Peter James does a lot of research and works quite closely with various police forces and uh, you know ex-policemen and organisations and that stuff. So you know that the way that he handles it is quite realistic as well, and I certainly did feel as though this was super realistic. It's about uh, 500 odd pages and I read it in two days, so it's definitely one of those that will hook you in. And also just in terms of the layout of it, because it's quite short chapters, it means you get quite a lot of sort of reasonably empty space and whatnot, like you've got a page here for example, and so you've got a lot of, it's not just solid information as some of these uh, thicker books are, so that kind of made it more of a pleasure to read as well. Uh, there was a bit during the middle where I kind of zoned out and didn't pay attention for about 50 to 75 pages or so, but it still worked quite well for me. And again, I think what what works well with this murder and this case in particular is that there are a lot of different potential suspects. One thing I will say is that there were a few things that didn't feel as though they were tied up, so I'm assuming they're going to get addressed in a future book, such as, for example, the fact that the uh, assistant commissioner, I think he's called Cassian Pugh, uh, he speaks fluent German and he kind of had a little conversation in German with Grace's new kid, and uh, but then he was quite shifty when he was, when you know, when it was asked, oh, well, how come you know German? He didn't really want to talk about it. So I'm keen to keep reading and see what, what that's all about. Overall, though, I did enjoy Need You Dead, and I would give this a pretty solid 4 out of 5. So those are the only two so far that I've read of the four that Biggie picked, but rest assured, I'm making progress with uh, The Lion Game, and uh, I've also had a brief start on uh, The Day of the Triffids as well, so I will be back shortly with another update for you. Cool. Okay, I've filmed a lot today, so here's hoping my voice doesn't go out, but... Uh, <laughs> We've got two more, the last two books that Biggie picked to take a look at. So first I read The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. Now historically I haven't had the greatest relationships with thrillers. Um, I don't know, sometimes I find them kind of too predictable. Sometimes I just find them not engaging, especially when the characters are kind of ones you're meant to dislike. I just find it hard to read about characters I dislike. In this one, it was less of a thriller and almost more of this story of friendship between all the different characters. Uh, they do have some like secrets in the past and you know, you know, the odd ghost in the closet and all of that um, so that was quite interesting and you get that kind of slowly revealed to you over time it also jumps backwards and forwards through time which doesn't always work well but in this case I do think it worked well I also think this is probably my favorite Ruth Ware book um, I've read three now I haven't read her latest I'll read you the blurb here to kind of give you a feel for what this is about the text message arrives in the small hours of the morning I need you Isa drops everything takes her baby daughter and heads straight to Sultan she spent the most significant days of her life at boarding school on the marshes there, days which still cast their shadow over her. Isa and her three best friends used to play the lion game, competing to convince people of outrageous stories. Now, after 17 years of hiding the truth, something terrible has been found on the beach. The friend's darkest secret is about to come to light. And um, I like the concept of the Lion Game itself. I can imagine this being played between schoolgirls. Basically, the rules of it were, you know, to lie to people. If you got away with a lie, you scored points. You got bonus points if it was someone particularly kind of dislikable or if it was a particularly, you know, unbelievable lie. And um, yeah, I thought it was it was quite a slow build. It, I, again, I wouldn't say it's really a thriller because again of how deliberately slow it is. It takes its time, you know. Um, if anything, it's more like a slow, long drawn out mystery, I guess. Um, but I did. I do think. I mean, Ruth Ware's an interesting author. She's one who, whose books I'm probably going to read, even though I don't necessarily expect to like them. So this was a pleasant surprise for me because I was expecting kind of, well, I guess anywhere between a three point, uh, between a three and a four, and I gave it a four out of five stars. So um, yeah, I was quite impressed by it, and I do want to read her latest one now, The Death of Mis Mrs. Westaway. So I'll keep an eye out for it in uh, charity shops. Yeah. And I'm aware that's three, four out of fives in a row that Biggie picked. And then the final one is John Wyndham, The Day of the Triffids. And go on, I will read you the blurb of this as well. The sky is simply full of shooting stars, she said. All bright green. Everybody's out watching them. And sometimes it's almost as bright as day, only all the wrong colour. 
It's a marvellous sight. It's such a pity you can't see, isn't it? It is. When Bill Mason wakes up to a catastrophe, he is glad that bandages covered his eyes the night before. He finds a population rendered helpless by the green lights. Now blind, they are at the mercy of the Triffids. Once, with their ability to move and their carnivorous habits, the Triffids were just botanical curiosities. But now, with vulnerable human flesh to feast upon, these homicidal plants are set to turn town and country alike into a killing ground and perhaps replace humanity at the top of the food chain. John Wyndham's most famous book, this unsettlingly vivid and thrillingly realised tale of ecological apocalypse, is a classic in its genre. And I love the fact that it's called an ecological apocalypse. I also think reading this, you can see how it's inspired pretty much every zombie movie and every post-apocalyptic movie out there, as well as obviously a lot of the literature. There's a reason it's sort of classic sci-fi. It was actually shouted out by Jean Bookish Thoughts in uh, her you know, classic sci-fi books you should read video recently as well. Um, my girlfriend Bex also said that I should get to it and obviously Biggie picked it for me as well and I did enjoy it. Um, I thought it was occasionally slow at times but at the same time I thought there was some really cool stuff it investigated. Uh, you know with every good post-apocalyptic novel the, the, the bad guys or whatever the monsters the triffids are one of the threats but there's also the threat of fellow humans. We get to see how this blindness as well affects people so there's for example, uh, like a community uh, where you can go in, but you have to have one, uh, 10 blind people for every sighted person and support them. And it's just, you know, not a good way to live. I think if they were feeding them like ground triffids. Um, I also like the triffids themselves. It was interesting how they were described. So they kind of behaved like ants. So they had no individual intelligence, but they learned intelligence as a group. So for example, when they started setting traps for them around the perimeter of where, you know, they were staying, the Triffids wouldn't keep falling into the trap over and over again. They'd start to learn as a group. And um, yeah, it was just quite a good survival story. Then there was also a lot of stuff about, you know, repopulation and rediscovering all of the science because, you know, it's in books. But the fact that it's in books doesn't mean you can do it. It also, you know, books assume a certain level of knowledge in the subject to begin with. And, the, you know, there's just some really cool stuff. And there's some cool stuff about kind of personal relationships. Again, how blindness and how that affects people. Uh, a lot of people... There's a lot of stuff with suicide here and I thought that was all handled really well of people that just couldn't deal with the horrors. And it's just, you know, a blueprint in again, you know, sort of survival horror, post-apocalyptic stuff. It's, you know, one of the masterpieces. So I think if you have any interest in that genre, you should definitely read it. I had some comments on my channel from people who said they'd been thinking about reading it, but I hadn't seen anyone talk about it and wanted to know what I thought. I can definitely say I would recommend it. Probably didn't enjoy it as much as the other three in this uh, video, but I still gave it 3.75 out of 5. And I read it kind of you know, 25 pages at a time uh, going into bed. So yeah, uh, I think that's probably a good way to do it as well. I didn't want to do it too fast, you know? I wanted to let it sit with me and think about the issues it raises. So yeah, I'd probably reread it as well. Probably the only one of these I'd reread, I think. So yeah, there's what I made of the books that Biggie picked for me. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more because, spoiler alert, I've already filmed another one of these. We're probably just going to keep doing these and just let Biggie keep picking my books. Because what the hey. So the next one's like a tomb edition or tome, however you pronounce it, with some quite thick books in it that I've been meaning to get to and have just needed an excuse. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. My voice is going and I still have my vlog to update. Oh no.